Are you looking to make a game? Or maybe you already have the game, but it has no player or something like that. I don't know. Or maybe you're just trying to level up your game dev skills. I'll tell you what, you need a good player controller. All right, there, there's no debate about it. You can't beat around the bush. You can't half-ass it. You need a good player controller. I don't care what kind it is, you need a good one. There are all sorts of player controllers. You got character controller, bridge of body. Oh, <clears throat> bridge of body, character controller, custom physics. Uh, all right, look, regardless, it doesn't matter. There's all sorts of player controllers out there, you know? And I mean, different strokes for different folks, right? I think that's what the saying is. And look, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can use one player controller for this game and the same one for another. You could use the same character controller across 30 million different games and platforms. I don't care. There's no right or wrong way to do it. With that being said, I'm going to show you by far the best way you're probably going to find on YouTube on how to make a player controller utilizing the built-in character controller component inside of Unity. I know, I know, that's a pretty big claim, but bear with me. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Micah. I'm a professional game developer. I worked at Microsoft, uh, Bungie, um, Activision, Blizzard, um, Respawn Entertainment. Ev literally every single game development company you can think of, I've been there, bro. I've been the brains behind everything. No, but seriously, I'm Micah. I've been making games for over a decade now. Got a pretty good grasp on it. One more thing before we get started. I have never been to Cape Cod before, all right? Just remember, kids, don't believe everything you see in here on the internet. Take it with the grain of salt, all right? Without further ado, let's get started here. As you can see in the background, I have a brand new Unity project inside the good old smack in Unity 2020 because I'm a lazy bastard and I still have not upgraded to current long-term support versions of Unity. I will do it eventually, all right? Give me some time. My schedule's packed. But it doesn't matter what version of Unity you're using unless you're using like Unity 3 or Unity 2 or something like that, which maybe you should upgrade before I do. Mr. 3.6. First things first, I set up my wonderful little level here. I got a nice gray floor. I got some red cubes that are pretty high up in the air just for some visual stimuli. You know, I want to walk around this scene with my new player controller. I want to see all of the 3D cubes in my nice plane on the ground in the default Unity skybox in the best possible way that I can. After that, you're going to want to make an empty game object, right? Call it whatever the hell you want. I don't care, but preferably call it player. Now under that player game object, you're going to make another empty game object called cam height or whatever you want to call it. This will be used for the crouching in the next tutorial I make. It's not relevant here, but you're going to want to have it anyways, all right? Put it under your player and then put the camera under that. Reset the camera's position so it's in the middle of the player and then move the camera up by whatever amount you want. I prefer 1.8. Two works also. You could do one. You could be a little gnome. It's up to you. Two Mr. Player over here. You're going to click on Add Component. You're going to click that Character Controller right there, right? You might have to search for it or you can navigate through the little menus. Just search for it. And just like that, he's got a Character Controller on him. Believe it or not, it's almost done. Next, you're going to change the center of the Character Controller to be one up on the y-axis that way he's flat on the ground he's not sticking into it at all otherwise you'll fall to the earth and i don't think you want to do that i dropped my lollipop so no more lollipop continuing on the rest of these are just personal preference i like to turn the radius down a little bit and i also like to turn the skin width down what the skin width is is basically the like safe margin of error distance between the actual bottom of the character controller and like the actual ground of the level i think the default is like 0 0.08 i turn it down to like 0 0.01 because honestly i've never found a real difference beside the uh you know the actual distance like how much higher up your camera is and stuff it turn make it whatever you want the default is totally okay the rest of these variables you don't really got to worry about right now we're going to come back to the step height a little later but we're just going to move on now move on to the next step with that being said somewhere in your project you're going to create a c sharp script called something i called it pl underscore controller short for player controller because i'm very organized i like to keep it all nice like order so i can tell everything's at and what everything belongs to call whatever you want next up ladies and gentlemen go ahead and throw that straight on the player itself you can either do that by dragging into the gray spot below or clicking add component and then searching for your little new component there and clicking add but of course don't have two just have one so go ahead and open up that brand new script we just made inside of visual studio it should come installed with unity if it doesn't that is not my problem man all right i'm not here to fix that for you Go get that shit fixed. We're gonna start off here by making a few variables. Walk speed, how fast the player is gonna move around. Another one for the actual character controller component itself. You're gonna have two float variables, one for the horizontal input from the player and the vertical input. And then you're gonna have two private vector three variables, player input and direction. Really quickly, I'll just go over these. Obviously, move speed is how fast the player is gonna move. That character controller one is a reference to the actual character controller we put on that player object. The horizontal and vertical input are basically just gonna be capturing input based on an axis from the legacy input manager. I don't know how to use the new one yet. I'm using legacy one in this video. If you know how to use the new input manager, by all means, please use it because it's way better than the old one. Player input is just a vector three that contains both the vertical and horizontal input, which basically is just going to determine which direction the player controller is going to move around in. A move direction is pretty much just everything combined together. So it's going to take the current rotation of the player, their input, and then the speed, combine all of it together, and then tell the character controller to move with that. So five steps in total. Can you believe that? It's a lot of steps for one variable. All right, first things first here. In the start method, you're going to tell that character controller that it 
belongs to this object. Get component without any previous context just refers to this current transform, this current game object, and it's gonna be asking for that component on the specific game object. And we only need to specify this reference once because unless it like grows legs and walks away or something, it ain't going anywhere. So it just needs to be assigned once in start, and then we can reference it from anywhere in the script whenever we want. Skipping down here, we're gonna make two new functions. First one, get input. Second one, manipulate controller. Get input is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, it just takes both those horizontal and vertical input variables and tells the input manager, hey, retrieve this axis with this name and put it into this float variable. So let me explain something really quick. Input.getAxis and input.getAxisRaw. They do the exact same thing. The only difference is that getAxisRaw retrieves the raw input from that given axis versus getAxis kind of smooths it out. But nine times out of 10, you're gonna wanna use getAxisRaw for things like player input and like mouse look. You don't wanna use getAxis for either of those because you'll end up with like weird drifting and then you'll be so confused and it'll bug the freaking crap out of you and it'll probably drive you insane. So spare yourself uh, all that time, all that mental energy, just use getAxisRaw. Next up here, we're setting that player input to a brand new spanking vector three where the x is the horizontal input the y is zero and the z is the vertical input now this probably already makes sense but i'm gonna explain it anyways so you do this right i forgot what this is called this is some cool hand thing that all the professionals do in unity you got y you got z and you got x all together you got uh, X, Y, Z, right? Same thing with the vector three, X, Y, Z, in that order. And where Y is vertical, we're gonna set it to zero here because we're just retrieving what the player is doing on their keyboard, not jumping just the WASD, right? We'll come back to this in a little bit because you're gonna very quickly see an issue that we can correct with like 10 characters or something like that. You'll see in a second. Next up, we got manipulate controller. And I know that sounds really cool, but I promise it's not. It's probably the most boring function in the entirety of this script. So in this first line here, we're setting move direction to be equivalent to whatever our current rotation is, whatever angle we're facing, right? And we're multiplying it by our input. Now, I don't understand the math here. Some math or Unity wizard could explain this to you. Just know that when you multiply this by the rotation first, then it follows the direction you're going. Next up here, we're multiplying the move direction vector three by time dot delta time and our walk speed. Now, what does this do? You might ask. So time dot delta time gets a little bit deeper than this, but for the most part, it's basically tied to the frame rate. So if you got 15 FPS, 10 FPS, a million FPS, 100 FPS, for the most part, time dot delta time is always gonna stay the same, which makes it a very good variable to multiply values by to get consistent results across different performance like levels, FPS, I guess. And the final line in this function for the time being is just telling the character controller to move given any vector three, which in this case, we're passing in uh, the, the move direction, right? So we're whatever way we're walking at what speed with what angle we're facing. I'd like to point something out here though. Inside of this move function, you do not want to do any sort of math. You might think, oh, maybe I should multiply the move direction by time dot delta time when I'm passing it into that move function for the character controller. No, no, no. You don't want to do this, all right? And here's why. So for like eight years, maybe almost nine years, I had this weird bug with the character controller where sometimes I would walk in a direction. It didn't matter what my frame rate was, anything like that. But I would just randomly teleport. And I was like, what the hell, man? I'm not telling you to teleport. I'm telling you to move that way. You know, it bugged me for the longest time. I tried looking into it, could not find anything. I asked people about it. They're like, you're fucking crazy, bro. But looking back on it, it all makes sense. Because I'm doing the exact same thing here, except I was multiplying by time dot delta time inside of that move function. Now that may be like an obvious thing, but how was I supposed to know. Basically what happens is if you're telling your character controller to move 10 meters in the distance every 10 seconds or something like that, right? 10 times a second. He's going to do that if you're passing it just like that into the move function. However, if you multiply by time dot delta time and your computer stutters, uh, the, the game lags for a second, time dot delta time is going to change because of those stutters. So instead of the character controller moving 10 meters, he might move 10.1, 10.2, 9.9, or just some random thing like that. It's gonna be off by a little bit. So don't do math inside of the move function for this thing, all right? Just do it outside of it. Ask that single vector three variable in there. It'll save you a lot of headaches, I promise. And the final thing for now is we're simply gonna call both of these functions inside of the update function, which if you didn't know, gets called every single frame. 60 FPS, 60 times a second, 10 FPS, 10 times a second. You get the gist. Now back in Unity, you can see we have these few variables on the side here. You can also hit play and walk around. Can you believe that? You can go left, right, forward, back, any diagonal direction, but there's an issue here. I'm sure you've seen this in a few games where if you move diagonally, you'll notice your player goes significantly faster. What's basically happening here is you're passing in both of those input variables in the same direction. It adds it up together, right? Make it a little bit easier to understand. Let's say when you press W on the keyboard, that vertical input flow variable becomes a positive one. If you press S, it becomes a negative one. And the same thing for A and D, negative one, positive one. So let's say you're pressing W and D. So suddenly you got positive one in the up direction and positive one in the right direction. So you're going diagonally at like a, a magnitude, I don't know what it's called, of two. 
two instead of one. It should always be one. And this is literally just simple math. It makes sense. If you're moving at the same rate in any given direction, then the speed will always be consistent. However, if that can differ based on how many keys you're pressing, the speed will be more or less just depending. And you want to know how to fix this? Remember when I said it was like 10 characters? Yeah, it's that right there. You just add dot normalized to the end of that vector. Basically what this does, like the tooltip says, it takes whatever the vector is and it just makes it a magnitude of one. Look at that. Same speed in every direction. It really is that easy. Honorable mention, inside of Unity, if you go to Edit, and then Project Settings, and then Input Manager, you can click on the little Axes button, and you'll see all these cool different little things. We don't care about any of them, except Horizontal and Vertical right now, all right? And maybe Mouse X and Mouse Y, but we'll get on to that later. So yeah, as you can see here, for both Horizontal and Vertical, the positive negative keys are Up, Down, or um, W and S, or A and D, or left and right. And left and right, up and down are the arrow keys, and obviously the other ones are WASD. So let me ask you a really, really serious question really quick. What good is a player controller if you can't freaking look around, bro? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make mouse look. First things first, create a few variables. We got a public transform reference to the camera. I like to call it cam. You can call it whatever you want. I would recommend not calling it camera because there's a default component called camera. And even though it's deprecated and it really doesn't work anymore, Unity likes to bother you about it. Please Unity, get rid of it. Next up here, we got a float variable for the sensitivity of the camera. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Set it to whatever your preference is. I like one. Next up on the chopping block, we got two more private float variables, baby. Mouse X and mouse Y. Now, these two variables are basically the exact same thing is horizontal and vertical input except instead of referencing the horizontal and vertical axes we looked at earlier we're instead going to be referencing the mouse x and mouse y axes inside of that same area and just for clarity's sake mouse x is when you move your mouse side to side mouse y is when you move your mouse up and down inside of our get input function here we're going to set mouse x equal to that input dot get access raw <clears throat> mouse x and you're going to multiply it by the camera sensitivity then you're just going to copy and paste that line straight down below itself except the only thing here is instead of just being an equal sign you're going to make it minus equals because the default mouse Y input is inverted. And unless you like inverted, make it minus equals. You know how in like every first person game ever, when you look up or down, you get clamped? Now to remedy the issue of your players snapping their neck constantly when they look up and down, you're gonna clamp that mouse Y variable, right? And you can change this to be whatever you want, 80, 75, 60, 10. It's based in degrees. So I have it set to 90 so I can look 90 degrees down and 90 degrees up. Mathf.clamp is exactly what it sounds like. It takes a given variable and it clamps it between a minimum and a maximum. In this case, minus 90 and positive 90. Next up here, we're gonna make a function called do mouse look, call it whatever you want. This function is just responsible for assigning the mouse look, setting the camera to be the proper rotation, rotating our player around, you know, the whole shebang. So the first line here, cam.local rotation is equal to quaternion.euler, or Euler, depending on how you like to see it. And the X value of that vector three is our mouse Y, and the Y and the Z are zero and zero. In its most basic and simple form, quaternion.euler just takes a vector three and converts it into a quaternion thing. And then right below, we got transform.rotate, zero, mouse X, zero. Now, rotate takes in a vector three variable. However, it has this awesome override where you can just type in the X, Y, and the Z. It does it all for you. It's great. And this just rotates the player on the uh, Y axis, left and right, just straight around with the mouse X, you know, side to side. With that being said, the last thing to do here is just call the function inside of update. Also, do yourself a favor and add these two lines inside of the update function anywhere. All it does is lock the cursor and hides it. Otherwise, your cursor is going to be floating around on the screen. Return to Unity and check it out. Would you look at that? It works. Well, I'll be damned. You know, you can even change the sensitivity value. You could be your own aim botter, spin botter, whatever those guys are called, you know, they're pretty cool, pretty cool. Look, you got a homemade one, DIY five minute craft right here. Here's another great point. What is any player controller without the ability to jump? Now, the thing with the character controller is that it has no physics at all. We gotta make our own physics here, baby. That's how crazy this shit is. First things first here inside of Visual Studio, you got three total variables. You got jump height, which is how high your character is gonna jump in meters. Then you got the gravity mold. Um, since we're faking our own physics here and there aren't real physics, I like to use this to fine tune the gravity a little bit more, make it a little less or a little more. You know how gravity works. And the last variable here is Y velocity. You can make this one private. This is just a local reference to the actual velocity that the character's got right now. Again, this is all fake physics. None of this is real. All right, don't try this at home. I'm gonna create two functions here. The first one is called fake those physics boy. And you know, you can call us whatever you want. This is just a function that's gonna handle the actual physics themselves. So it's just out of the way, all neat and organized. The second one is actually for jumping. This is what's gonna happen when we hit the space bar. I'm gonna call this function. He's gonna do all the cool jump stuff. First up here inside of the jump function, you're gonna set Y velocity to whatever the hell this monstrosity is. All right, look, I found this piece of code on Stack Overflow like six years ago. It works great. Um, moving on. Next up here, we're gonna grab some input so we can call that jump function. So inside of the update function here, all you're gonna type is a little itty bitty if statement asking, did the player press the spacebar? And is the character controller on the ground? 
Lastly, just call that jump function and it's all good to go. Let's move on to the actual physics part. All right, now we're inside of that fake those physics boy function. Um, and these two little bits of code, man, I'll, I'll tell you what, I've been trying to wrap my head around how these work for years. I pretty much understand it now. I think I'm a little slow. All I need to know is that the top one is what's going to happen when we're on the ground and the bottom one is what's going to happen when we're in the air. That's why the gravity multiplier is in this part of the code instead of the other one because this basically just happens when we're in the air, you know, when we want gravity to actually take effect. The last final thing we need for jumping, ladies and gentlemen, is in the manipulate controller function. So right after you're multiplying the move direction by the speed, you're going to basically set the Y part of that move direction to be the Y velocity because you don't want the actual gravity uh, affecting the player to be multiplied by the speed because then if you're sprinting, you're going to go faster, crouching, you're going to go slower in the air. Just do it after, right? And then right after that, you're going to multiply the whole entire thing by time, not delta time, baby. And just like that, we got jumping. He's jumping around. You could set the jump height to 10, flies way high in the air. You could set the gravity mold to like something like five and you fall and rise really quick it's totally up to you all right now we're on to the second to last part of this little tutorial here now we're going to talk about sprinting so sprinting is unbelievably easy first things first two freaking variables bro you got a sprint speed pretty self-explanatory set it's whatever you want and then you got a bool here for whether or not we are sprinting now you can make this bool private or public it does not matter to me i like to have it public because i like to see what it's doing the inspector you could totally have it private but then you can't see what it's doing and then in the update function right after we set the player input you're just going to set that boolean variable equal to whether or not we are pressing the left shift key on our mother freaking keyboard <clears throat> last up here inside of the manipulate controller function you're going to create a temporary float now this float is going to be assigned differently depending on whether or not we're sprinting so if we are sprinting it's going to be set to our sprint speed if we aren't sprinting it's going to be set to our walk speed and all we got to do is multiply move direction by that new speed instead of just walk speed and that's literally it look he's flying bro Wish I could be like him. I would say one of the biggest downsides using a character controller over rigid body for an actual player controller is that because the character controller has no actual physics, there's no smoothing at all whatsoever. It's just straight data, baby. All right, you know, the rigid body's got all sorts of physics and stuff going on in the background that I don't even know about. It, the character controller is all raw. It, it only does what you tell it to. In this example, you can see when we're moving around, it kind of just stops and starts really abruptly. You know, when you have physics, like actual physics, it eases in, eases out. Pretty simple. What we're going to do here, basically just going to smooth the values out before we feed them into the character controller you know what i think this calls for three more variables first up here being input smooth time this is the time in actual seconds that it'll take for our values to get smoothed out so obviously 0.1 would be 100 milliseconds one would be a thousand milliseconds it's it's real time actual time next up here we got a private vector three called r underscore player input smooth now you don't need to put the r in here i put the r in here because uh, what we're going to use in second it has to reference a variable and i like to put r underscore before all of those reference variables just to make it a little easier to read um you don't have to do this just personal preference and then lastly here we got Got another vector three that's private just called smooth player input nothing to explain there we'll get to that in a minute so back in the update function right after we set the player input to that sweet sweet normalized variable you're going to follow along with this line right here vector three dot smooth damp what is it and why the hell is it called smooth damp so the way this function is laid out it's got a set of four parameters here it's got the current vector three what it is at the moment which in this case we can set to be smooth player input what the target one is which is player input because we want it to smooth from smooth player input into target input next up here is it's going to reference a vector three variable i'm pretty sure it does this just to keep track of what the last value was just put in that reference one you made, one that I called R underscore whatever, right? And then lastly, you get the variable smooth time, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is the smoothing in real seconds. So you can pass in that variable we made. And lastly, inside of the manipulate controller function, instead of multiplying our move direction by that player input variable, you're instead going to multiply it by the smooth player input variable. And that's it. Now, you definitely have to tinker with the values here a little bit. I set it to one and it looked like I was walking on some ice or something. Don't set it too high because then it feels like you intentionally added input delay into your game. Um, don't set it too low because otherwise then it's just useless. My sweet spot, honestly, is anywhere from 0.05 to 0.75. Anything above that kind of feels not snappy enough for me. And you can even go further with this. Usually, I smooth the player input and the current speed. But yeah, so it's a very subtle difference but it definitely makes a huge difference um when you compare them side to side like in the actual game it feels way smoother way better just tinker with the variable all right one final thing that i'm pretty sure is a bug of sorts with the character controller is you'll notice if you go up against some sort of object that's flat and you jump against it going in the direction of the object you'll notice near the top your player will like snap up and down that's because the step height variable now the simplest way to fix this is just by lowering the step height the only caveat with this is because we lower the step height that means the threshold to step over steps is a lot lower but in general a lot of games don't have actual stairs 
colliders. They have smooth ramp colliders. Setting the 0.1 really shouldn't be an issue. If you notice that you can't step over certain objects, like really small objects, make it a little higher. Just tinker with it until you find a good sweet spot. I don't think there's an actual fix for this. I'm pretty sure it's a bug with the character controller that's been in Unity for, what, like over 10 years now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is it for this little tutorial here. Next time we're going to cover crouching, something called ground snapping. We're going to cover footsteps, the whole, like, the next shebang, all right? The next nine yards. Just to set you up really pretty, you know, get a good player controller in there that you can bring across to pretty much any project at all. This is the same character controller I've been using in my games for the past, like, 10 years. I've just perfected it over time. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.